Welcome to our logarithm review. I know we're doing it a little bit differently this chapter, but hopefully you can just fast forward and rewind and use this however you want. I thought we would start by going through our quiz from last time because we're not going to have time to talk about this in class. So if we look at number one, um, you can see that I solved this using two different ways and it does not matter which way you decide to use. Our first method is using change of base. And remember, when we use change of base, the base stays on the bottom. So it is really important that we're reading this as log base 5 of 125. Also, when I'm using that method, I need to be sure to use parentheses in my calculator, and I end up getting 3 as an answer. The other way we can do this is using the definition of a logarithm. And when I use the definition of a logarithm, it is definitely important that we remember how to change from logarithmic form into exponential form and vice versa. In fact, this is probably one of the first things I would write down on my test just so I don't forget it. So I don't see this equal to anything, so I'm going to say it's equal to x, and I wrote it as 5 to the x power equals 125. Our goal is to get the same base, so I, re I rewrote 125 as 5 cubed, so x is equal to 3. Because as soon as my bases are the same, all I care about are the exponents. So there are problems on the test that you can solve either way, and there are some problems that you're going to have to use the second method to solve. Looking at number two, we could use change of base. I'm just, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just going to go about using the second method. So I would make this 2 squared to the x equals 2 to the negative 1. Since I'm taking an exponent to a power, I would multiply. My bases are the same, so I'm setting my exponents equal. So x is equal to negative 1 half. Number 3 deals with expanding, and I saw two major problems on this one. So I would start by writing this as log base 7 of y minus the quantity log base 7 of 3 plus log base 7 of x squared. Notice that I wrote base 7 on all three of those terms. That's one of the mistakes I saw. The other mistake I saw was people forgetting to distribute the negative. I knew that I needed a negative because it dealt with division. 3x squared is multiplied, so I need addition there. The other thing I'm going to have to do here is bring this 2 out in front. So I'm going to go ahead, if I can change colors here, this would become log base 7 of y minus log base 7 of 3 minus 2 log base 7 of x. Some of you left it in parentheses and didn't distribute, and I would mark that as correct, but this is definitely kind of a basic example I would expect you guys to know how to do. If we look at number four, it is very similar, so I'm going to start by breaking this up using addition, and the reason why I'm using addition is because it's multiplied together. Our final step would be to go ahead and bring our exponent out in front to be the coefficient. And some of you guys actually took this one a step further and wrote this as log base 3 of 3 cubed, and we know log base 3 of 3 is 1, so you ended up just getting 3 there, and that was completely correct. But if you guys had this, this is really all I need. Number five really works in the opposite direction. So this time I'm condensing. So whenever we're condensing, the first thing we are looking for are exponents. And we find the exponents based on what the coefficients are. So I'm looking for coefficients to make into our exponents here. And then I need to go ahead and condense this. Since I have division, I know, or I'm sorry, since I have subtraction, I know that I'm condensing this with division. And then I need to go ahead and go a step further and actually figure out what is 12 to the fourth, what is 2 to the fourth. 
So I can go ahead and just put that in my calculator and when I put that in, I get log base 16 of 1296. Since it just tells us to condense it, I can leave this as my answer. Looking at number six, number six is another condensing one. The first thing I would need to do here is go ahead and make this ln of one half squared. And now since I have addition, I can go ahead and just write these all in terms of multiplication. I know one half squared is one fourth. 20 times one fourth is five. So our final answer here is ln of 5x. So 7 through 10 were really the new things that we learned. So on number 7, we learned two different ways we could do this. We could take a log of both sides, or we could go ahead and write both of them as some base to a power. And that's how most of you guys did this problem, so I'm going to go through doing it that way. But just know if you took a log of both sides, that's fine too. So I'm making this 5 squared to the x minus 1 equals 5 cubed to the 4x. And then a lot of people went wrong on this step and either just set x and set x minus 1 equal to 4. I need to remember that I'm actually setting 2 times x minus 1 equal to 3 times 4x because those are the exponents. So 2x minus 2 equals 12x. Negative 2 is equal to 10x. And a very common dividing mistake here is making sure I divide both sides by 10 and not the other way around. And I get negative 1 fifth is equal to x. If I double check that, it, is, it works in the original equation, so that is our solution. We're going to start number 8 um, by isolating our, our exponent here. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5. And this one I could do two different ways. I could write this as log base 10 of 5 equals 2x. That's just using our definition of a logarithm like I spoke about earlier. Or what some of you guys did. Um, is just take a log of both sides. We can do it either way, it doesn't matter. 2x goes out in front. We know log of 10 is 1 because when I just see log, I know that is our common logarithm, so it has a base of 10. And we said that whenever we have something like log base b of b, that it's equal to 1 every single time. So in this case, I have 2x equals log of 5, and then I'm going to divide by 2. I need to make sure to put 5 in parentheses. And when I do that in my calculator, I end up getting like 0.349 or something like that. And then I can double check it, and it does work. Number 9, first thing I need to do here is go ahead and get my e all by itself. So I have e to the x equals 27 halves. And at this point, a lot of you guys got stuck. And I just need to remember that on this problem, I, I can either just take an ln of both sides. And the reason why I would choose to do an ln instead of taking a log of both sides is because I know that ln is log base e. So ln of e is equal to 1. So I just get x equals ln of 27 halves. So x is equal to, it's something like 2.6. And if you guys did it the other way, as soon as I get, let me try and use this. Okay, let's see if this works. As soon as I get to this point, ooh, this is kind of fun. Um, I can go ahead and rewrite it so that it is in logarithmic form, so log base e, which is ln, of 27 halves equals x, which is exactly what we have written right there. Last problem on the quiz. Most of you guys did a pretty good job of this. Um, there's actually really one, only one way I could solve this, so I'm going to go ahead and change this into exponential form. 
So I cannot stress enough how important it is to know how to change back and forth from logarithmic form to exponential form. We know that 2 to the negative first is 1 half, so 1 half equals x. Okay, so now we're actually moving on to the review worksheet. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling out this chart. And this problem is really similar to what you guys will see on the test. Um, we can choose any x values we want. I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So if I substitute x or negative 2 in for x, I would get negative 1, which is 1 half, 2 to the 0, which is 1. My 0 looks weird there. OK, there we go. It's 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. So this might be kind of tough for me to actually draw, but it's going to look something. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. It looks something like that. So now for the second part, it's asking us to find the inverse of f of x. And we learned this in chapter 7, and we said all we need to do is switch x and y. So all I did is I took these x values, and I put them in for y, and I took these y values, put them in for x. I could care less what I'm putting in between there. So when I go ahead and plot these points, it looks something like that red line that I drew. And then the final step, it's asking us to draw the line of reflection. I know that our line of reflection, since they are inverses, should be the line y equals x. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that straight across there. The final step on this problem is talking about domain and range. We know domain means x and range means y. So our domain for function f of x, if we look at it, it's covering all the different x values. So we would say it's going from negative infinity. Let me get my little pointer out here. It's going from negative infinity, like all the way over here. And even though it looks like it's going up, it really is continuing this way forever as well. Now with the range, something kind of strange happens. It doesn't cross this line right here. So what that means is that it's going to get really close to zero and then go up to positive infinity. We're never going to hit any negative numbers. As soon as I figure out what the domain and range are for our function f of x, it's really easy to find the inverse because we said all the inverse is is when we switch x and y. So it would make sense if I just switched the domain and the range. So I totally forgot my calculator at school. Um, so I'm just going to get to the point where we would put this into our calculator. And then I'm assuming you guys will be fine at home doing this. So if we go ahead and look at number two, number two, I can just put straight into my calculator. Same with number four. Those are both pretty basic, easy to do. I'm expecting you guys all to get those right on the test. Um, just make sure we're using parentheses and we're in good shape. For numbers three and five, the way that they're written, since it is not a base of e or a base of 10, I am going to have to use change of base. So I would need to do log of 1 half over log of 4 and put that into my calculator. And I believe we get an answer of negative 1 half. And for number 5, I would do log of 32 divided by log of 2. And I end up getting an answer of 5. And I actually think we did that one in class today. Um, however, I made you do 2 to the x equals 32 and solve it that way because there are some problems on the test where you need to evaluate without your calculator and I am grading your work. 5, 6, and 7. Probably the toughest problems for some of you on this. And the key thing on these problems is that I need to go ahead and get 
this in terms of log of 2, log of 3, and log of 10. It does not say x equals 2. It says x equals log of 2. So we need to think, is there somehow I could rewrite log of 5 in terms of 2, 3, and 10? And when I'm saying rewrite, I mean we need to rewrite 5 in terms of those numbers using either multiplication, exponents, which really are multiplication, or division. So I'm going to think of it as 10 divided by 2. So this is log of 10 minus log of 2 because when I expand, since I have division, it's like subtraction. At this point, I can go ahead and substitute in my variables. So I get z minus x. Number six is a little bit tougher. So I'm going to start by doing a factor tree. So I'm going to see it's 12 by 100. So I have 6 and 2, 10 and 10. So I really have 3 times 2 times 2 times 10 times 10. And some of you might be wondering why I'm keeping 10 and 10 the way they are. And the reason I'm keeping those is because this tells me that 10 is a number that I want. So I'm going to think of this as log of 3 times 2 squared times 10 squared. So I have log of 3 plus, and I'm going to do two things at once here. I'm going to split it up using addition, and I'm going to move the exponent out in front. So hopefully we're okay with this. So I have log of 3 plus 2 log of 2 plus 2 log of 10. At this point, I can go ahead and substitute in, and I get y plus 2x plus 2z. And last but not least, for you guys, maybe one of the toughest ones. It's really strange because I have 2.16, and I don't really know what to do with that. Sometimes if I had something like 0.75 or 1.5, I could just rewrite that as a fraction, um, which I'm doing here, but this, I, I'm taking it to the extreme and I'm making it 216 over 100. I know 100 is 10 times 10, so that's going to be helpful. So I'm going to write it as 10 squared. And off to the side here, I'm going to write it down here. If I have 216, um, I know 4 goes into that, let's see, 54 times. So that's like 2 times 2. I know 54 is 9 times 6, which is 3 times 3 times 3 times 2. So if we look at that, it's like I have 3 cubed times 2 cubed. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in the numerator. And now I'm going to split this up and move my exponents right away. So I have 3 log of 2 plus 3 log of 3 minus 2 log of 10. And I know this is getting a little tough to see. So at this point, I can substitute in. I know log of 2 is equal to x, so I have 3x plus 3y minus 2z. Now, if you guys need more help on problems like this, that would be like 9, 10, and 11 on the fancy log worksheet. Um, there's also a section on the test like the beginning of the fancy log worksheet, so I want to take a moment and look through that. So I just want to take a moment and go through some of these on the fancy log worksheet. I would really encourage you guys to redo this whole worksheet just to make sure you're feeling okay on things. Um, why don't we start off with one like number five, which is a pretty basic one, but this time what I want to do, I want to get it in terms of log of A, log of B, and log of C. Once again, notice it doesn't say a equals 5, it's log of a equals 5. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as log of a squared minus the quantity log of b squared plus log 
of C cubed. Right now I still don't have it in terms of A, B, log of A, log of B, log of C. So I'm going to bring out the exponent to be the coefficient. And I'm going to distribute the negative at the same time. So I'm really just expanding this using the rules we've learned. So I know division means subtraction, multiplication means that I'm going to have addition. That's why I have addition inside the parentheses here. At this point, I can say, okay, well, log of A is 5, log of B is 6, and log of C is 8. So I have 10 minus 12 minus 24. So I have negative 26. And then I'm going to go ahead and do one like number 4, and I, I think that'll be it. But first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to think of this as log of b squared c to the 4th to the 1 4th power. Because I know a 4th root means an, expo an exponential, um, I'm sorry, a fractional exponent. So this is like log of b to the 1 half, c to the 1st. Or I could just write c. So I have log of b to the 1 half plus log of c. I'm going to bring my 1 half out in front. So 1 half log of b plus log of c. Log of b is 6. Log of c is 8. So I have 3 plus 8, which is 11. So if you need more work on this concept, on anything on this worksheet really, um, I would just continue to do these problems over and over again, um, and that's really the best thing that you can do to prepare yourself for the test. So now we're going to go back to just basic condensing and expanding. So I know when I'm condensing, first thing I'm looking for are coefficients that we can make into exponents. So I'm going to write this log base 3 of x to the 1 half power minus log base 3 of y cubed. At this point, I know that subtraction means I need to use division. And I'm going to write this as root x over y cubed. For number 9, I'm doing a very similar thing, so I'm going to start by making this log of 2 squared, or I could just think of it as log of 4. And what could be a little bit confusing on this problem is knowing, since we have addition and subtraction, what do we multiply, what do we divide? And my advice, we really go from left to right. So I have log of 5 times 4 divided by 2. So I have log of 20 over 2, which is log of 10. And if you gave me that, you'd be correct, but know that we could also go a step further and say that it's 1 because I know log means log base 10. While we're on condensing, I'm just going to talk about number 11. Number 11 was on the quiz we took today, so if you have questions on that one, rewind and look back at the quiz um, and just make sure that you're going step by step on that problem. Number 10 was also on the quiz. Um, the only thing I want to point out here is just remember that we should put parentheses around something like 3x squared. And that's going to remind me to put parentheses when I expand so I can distribute the negative. Once again, if you need more help on that problem, rewind this and look at the beginning of the video. And last but not least, we have our solving problems. So, um, as I stated earlier, there are two different ways we can do this problem. I think the easiest thing to do is get a common base. So, I'm going to think of this as 5 squared to the x minus 1 power. And this one's already 5. Since I'm taking an exponent to a power, remember that I actually need to multiply those together. And if you distributed right away, that's totally fine. At this point, since I have the same base, I can just set the exponents equal to each other. So I have 2x minus 2 equals 4x. I got 2x minus 2 because I distributed. 
negative 2 equals 2x, so negative 1 is equal to x. On all these problems, it is important that we're plugging it back in and double checking that it works. Um, I'm going to skip that here. You guys can kind of do that on your own, but that would be kind of that last step in making sure we know how to do this. And um, I just want to point out there are not many problems on the review. So if you're going through this and you feel wonderful on doing every problem, then you're in pretty good shape. If you're struggling on some of these, I would go back to assignment number seven, which is what you've turned into class um, today. And I would just kind of redo some of those, um, specifically the odd ones, so that way you could check your answer. Number 13, first thing I need to do is isolate my exponent. So I get 10 to the 3x equals 3. What makes this problem different is I cannot write 3 as 10 to some power, and I can't write 10 as 3 to a power. So we really have two different options here, and I've mentioned this a few times, but the first thing I could do, I could just take a log of both sides, and this is really just your personal preference on what you want to do. The other thing I could do is at this point, I could change this into a logarithm and write log base 10 of 3 equals 3x. It does not matter which way you do it, so use whatever you think is easiest. Okay, I'm moving my exponent out in front here, and the one thing that I notice is I have log of 10, which is 1, so I have 3x equals log of 3. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Once again, I don't have my calculator, so um, you guys can do that on your own. The important thing here, though, is that I'm doing log of 3. I'm closing my parentheses, dividing it by 3, putting that into my calculator. And make sure you remember your calculator for the test, or else it'll be really rough for you. Okay, 14. Even though it's E in, for some reason, that totally freaks us out. My goal is to get our exponent all by itself. So I started by subtracting that 7 from both sides. Now I'm going to divide by negative 2. So I have e to the x equals 15. At this time, you could definitely change forms. I'm going to take an ln of both sides. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because ln of e is equal to 1. So I end up getting x equals ln of 15. And then I would need to put that into my calculator, and that's how I get the answer that is on the review worksheet key. 15 looks different. Every other problem so far has been in exponential form. This time, this is written as a logarithm. And some of you might want to do log of x divided by log of 2. Our problem there is that really doesn't get us anywhere because I can't do anything with log of x. So this is when I would need to use that extremely important skill of knowing how to change from logarithmic form to exponential form. I know 2 to the negative second is 1 fourth, so my answer is 1 fourth. Once again, if I plug these back in for x, it, I'm seeing that it's working, so it's not extraneous, so I would give that as my answer. So we are cruising along here. And looking at 16, 16 is strange because all of a sudden I have two logarithms. Expect to see stuff like this on your test. I know that if we have two logarithms that have the same base, I can just condense it using multiplication. The reason why I'm condensing it using multiplication is because of this addition sign right here. Now this problem is similar to what we did on number 15. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this in exponential form. I cannot stress enough how important that is. I know 3 to the 0 power is 1 because anything to the first power is, I'm sorry, anything to the 0 power is 1. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So I get x equals 1 fourth. Double check it, plug it back in, and it does work. 17 is really similar to the first one we did with solving here. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I can write both of these as 4 to a power. 
And there's a few different ways we could do this. You could have written them all as two to, uh, two to a power, or I could have taken a log of both sides. It doesn't matter, do what is easiest. At this point, I'm gonna set my exponents equal to each other. So I get x minus one equals two x, negative one equals x. If I substitute that in, it does work. And the thing I wanna point out here is that doing the problem itself, once I'm doing the math, it's not that bad. The toughest step is this first step, knowing, okay, where do I go from here? And as soon as we kind of figure that out, we're good to go on all the actual math. 18 looks like number 16, and we already talked about the fact that I can condense by using multiplication. And I think we did one like this in our notes. Now I'm gonna change this into exponential form, and some of you might be freaking out because we don't have a number here, but I know that that means that our base is 10. So I have 10 squared equals 4x minus 4. So 100 equals 4x minus 4. I need to add 4 to both sides, so 104 equals 4x. Divide by 4. And I end up getting 26 equals x. Once again, plug that back in. Double check if it works. And it and then since it does work, it makes a true statement, I'm gonna say it's our answer. And we made it all the way to number 19. Um, 19 can be a tricky one, and the thing I just want to remind us of is this is very similar to what I'm writing right now, and all we need to do is factor it. The only difference is this time it's e to the x squared instead of x squared. So when I factor it, I'm going to have e to the x and e to the x. Definitely one like this on our test. I need to think what factors of 10 add up to be negative 7. So I'm going to do negative 5 and negative 2. At this point, I need to set both of these equal to 0. So I have e to the x equals 5 and e to the x equals 2. There's a few different ways we could solve this. I'm gonna take a ln of both sides. Once again, I forgot my calculator, so I'm moving my coefficient out in front. We know ln of e is one, because ln is log base e. I don't know what ln of five is, because my brain does not work that way, but when you put that in your calculator, you will get an answer. I'm going to solve this one the same exact way, so I have ln of e to the x equals ln of 2. I know ln of e is 1, so my x just goes out in front. x equals ln of 2. Put that in our calculator, and we'll be good. So my hope is that going through this review was very helpful for you. Um, We'll talk about it on Wednesday to see if you guys use this or not. Well, Wednesday or Thursday, depending on when you have me. But um, this test definitely worth a lot of our grade this early in the semester. The other thing I want to remind you about, and I'm writing it right now, is that your responsive writing is due. And my word of advice is don't make the, resp the responsive writing questions tougher than they need to be. Use the basic skills we talked about. A lot of them, it sounds very confusing because it's like a word problem, but if you use the properties that we learned, you'll be in great shape. So study, 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 um, and you guys will do well. Okay, have a great rest of the night.